and then we go to the next step mule transportation from the farm to the factory right from the we call this collection point large company in vietnam for example they have collection points i will show you how because for example if a family has only three cows a family has two cows the other family had five cows so these family cannot invest a cooling tank so they milk the cows and they put in the cans like this and they carry to you call it collection point okay they bring the milk here and where then the person in charge here we take sample we take sample of it milk to analyze the quality we study in chapter four okay and we also take some sample to send to the factory in the next step they analyze uh, some parameter and they see that this milk is okay and then they put in the cooling tank at the collection point they have a cooling tank of five ton for example and here they they collect the milk from many farmers and from here now the cooling truck the cooling truck of the company will come and pump this milk and bring to the factory and this is happen if the cows are raised here in small scales but for the for example if there are large farms if one farm has a hundred cows two hundred cows a thousand cows they already have cooling tank for themselves so then we can skip this part and now the requirement is here from here to here maximum one hour okay maximum one hour outside before the meal should be inside in the cooling tank Good for the last farm like that, and the company will come and bring milk directly to the factory. In this way, a shorter distance, a shorter time, and the quality of the raw milk can be higher. Lower number of microorganisms, for example. Okay, we go back to milk transportation. Here they can start the milk in the churn, and they can just transport with a normal truck or a refrigerated truck, but for a short distance. And here, this is more advanced than the cooling tank. This cooling tank is at a large farm or as the collection point. Then the company will come and pump the mill like this to bring to the factory. And this is actually a cooling truck. This truck has a system to maintain low temperature of milk. Now, reception into the factory. So here is a cooling truck, a refrigerated truck where they carry milk and then they now the milk is pumped into the factory. Before pumping into the factory, actually they also take sample. They take some sample first to analyze, to be sure that this milk is suitable for it before they allow to pump inside. And here you see there's a, just a small van that carry the cans of milk at room temperature for a soft distance. If they can receive the milk in the can like this and to enter where inside there is a system that overturn the can. Overturn the can and then the milk is poured inside for processing. Okay, at the reception the milk is measured. Of course, they should measure what is the volume, what is the weight, the mass of milk to so to know the how much need to pay. They need to pay, for example. So here is the cooling truck that the milk is pumped into the system, and then they can measure by measure the volume. They have a device they call this metering device. They measure the velocity, like a lulung sữa. Okay, the velocity, the volume of milk is pumped through a time. They can measure it and then, then they can calculate the volume. But before measuring, there is a small instrument here to remove the air. It's called air eliminator. They remove the air from the milk first before measuring to have accurate measuring. Okay. Otherwise, you measure a lot of volume of, of, of air. Air is also not so good for the next storage step. Okay, storage step. That's why it's good to remove here. It's another way to measure milk is actually here. It's a truck on the right side. The truck enter the factory and then they will balance this truck. That will record the weight of this truck. And then when the truck enter, and then, then when they already lock the milk inside the factory, when the truck coming back, they wait again. They balance again the second time. 
and then they already know how much milk is loaded into the factory. That's two way by weight and by volume. This one is by volume. This one is by weight. And then the next step is storage at the factory. Now milk is introduced into the factory and they can further be stored, but the temperature here still maintained to fall maximum or below. And then they contain the milk in silo tank. This is called silo tank, which can be very large. If you look at this, uh, if you look at the milk factory, maybe you go to Vietnam factory in Ben Yu, you could see many silo tanks like this. And the capacity of one silo tank can be 25 tons, can be up to 150 tons. And then they store like that. And these tanks are actually also like double jacket, double wall, like two layer. The wall has two layer, and outside here is cold water, like that. So to be sure that the temperature of milk inside is maintained at low temperature. There's also agitation, of course, to have homogeneous temperature. And there are quite some sensors, some indicators, the sensor to record the volume of milk, to record the temperature, and so on in the tanks. The agitation should be not violent, not so vigorously, just gentle, just to be sure that the milk is mixed gently to have homogeneous temperature and to prevent the creaming as well because if you don't do um, agitation the fat globby will raise up and maybe you have a layer of cream at the top before milk is received into the factories people have to take sample to analyze to be sure that milk is suitable for processing and then they can do some regular tests here. For example, the freezing point depression in chapter 4 we discussed already. They can check the presence of antibiotics by fermentation tests. If there is residue of antibiotic in the milk, then the, the short fermentation test will not occur. And then this is not good because milk is not suitable for human consumption. Uh, if there is antibiotic, for example. And also actually not good for fermentation because fermentation is that you use starter coater but if there is antibiotic in the milk, starter coater will be inhibited and cannot do the job. Here they also measure the fat content of the milk to determine the quality, to determine the price that they need to pay to the farmers, for example. And then, now, when milk is pumped into the factory, they pump over a heat exchanger, a plate heat exchanger to be sure to cool down the temperature. And then, after that, the tanker, means the cold trucks, should be cleaned and disinfected by a CIP system. Inside the cooling truck, there is a CIP system cleaning in place uh, to clean and to disinfect. Clean is to make it clean, disinfect means to kill bacteria, to make it sterile. And then, what is that? I already explained this. In some cases, the milk is collected via collecting point, collecting station, before it's be transferred to the factory. Now, when they transfer raw milk from outside into the factory, if they want to store further for a while, they need to apply a step called thermization. This is a gentle heat treatment, là xử lý nhiệt nhẹ, 60 to 65 degrees C for maximum 20 seconds. This is a quite gentle heat treatment. The purpose or the objective of this treatment is to kill psychotrophic bacteria before milk can be stored further in the factories. Okay, so the question is here, why they need to store further? Now, they take from the tank and then they pump in the factory. Why they don't just process right away? They have to store because you need large volume you see they have silo tanks they can contain a large volume of raw milk before processing if you start processing with little volume you just start your whole line whole system and then you have to stop because there is no more milk to process then this actually not economical 
because in dairy processing the system is all like clothed tanks and pies and vans and pumps and so on so it's very costly to do cleaning they have to do CIP cleaning in the whole factory so if you just process for one hour and stop and have to do a CIP is very expensive so what do they need they need to have enough volume big enough before starting processing that's why they need to apply thermization to make the milk stable for a while, store further for a while before processing. And the objective, again, is to destroy psychotrophic bacteria, the one that can grow at low temperature, can grow at 4 degrees C, for example. Okay, and now we go to uh, see the table. These are the tests. Uh, the test that they can apply to evaluate if the milk is suitable to be uh, loaded inside the factory. These are the tests. For example, the first one is sensorial test, just to check the appearance of the milk, the taste of the milk, and the smell of the milk. Desirable means the level that they want is actually it should be normal. The appearance of milk should be normal. Taste and the smell of milk should be uh, normal. There is no warning. If it's not normal, they just reject. Okay. For example, it's not normal here. They just reject the milk. They don't receive into the factory. The temperature of the milk in the tanker should be 5 degrees C or less. That's desirable. The milk fat should be 3.5% or more. The non-fat solid should be 8.6% minimum should be higher than 8.6%. The FPD, FPD is freezing point depression. Freezing point depression. To know what is freezing point depression, you go back and check chapter 4. We already discussed this. It means how, how much difference of the freezing point of milk compared to the freezing point of pure water. So it should be 540 milli degree C, more than that. 0 0.54 degree C. And then the antibiotics should be not detectable. Visible dust should be smaller than this. To, de to determine visible dust, they just use um, as a normal filter. Okay, And then they weight the dirt. The dust in milk can be like the hair of cow, like some grass can go inside, for example. And some other tests like TBC. What is TBC? TBC is total bacterial count. The number of bacteria in fresh milk. So the desirable level is below 10 power 5, below 100,000 CFU per milli ml. You see that fresh milk contain a lot of bacteria. They already allowed at 1 power 5. Uh, means that fresh milk always has raw milk, for example, raw milk. Actually, it has, always has bacteria. And then the thermoduric count. This is the count of spore. The number of spore should be much less, less than 5,000 per milli ml. Okay. So these are the normal tests that they do to determine the quality of milk, the price they pay to the farmers, and also if they accept to take the milk inside the factory or not.